Hello, dear friends. This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m. Nourishing our souls. As we are here together, we are working on this beautiful chapter, 11th. This chapter that we're going to read tonight is a living lesson for the heart. In a world that is making choices between the good and evil, between the right and the wrong. We're here today to meditate a little more about what to do in the most difficult scenarios. We're talking about revenge. The chapter we're gonna read is titled Life Lesson or Living Lesson. And Mei Mei, the spirit author, brings to us a story that is hard to believe but we believe because she's bringing to us to show to us that God at the end of the day is always taking care of everything this message today goes hand in hand with everything that is happening around the world many people are easily taking the route of anger hatred competition and dispute versus the Christ conscious response which is patience calmness forgiveness which we don't quite know because it's probably one of the first lives that we're meditating on it seriously in previous lives we may have heard of Jesus teachings but we were still performing as the world told us this one is different finally finally we are with the help of spiritism revisiting the gospel from a completely different angle and in particular today we want to highlight this chapter chapter 12 of this book the gospel according to spiritism which is about love your enemies not simple, not simple. Many people nowadays, they're like, oh, if that doesn't work, just go away. If your marriage doesn't work, go away. If your children don't respect you, just punish them. Or if your colleagues disrespect you, just sabotage them as well. It's like an eye for an eye, the mosaic law still present in the 21st century okay so in this book the gospel according to spiritism when we see the chapter that talks about love your enemies we get to know of discarnate enemies we got to know of what vengeance is about hatred is about dwelling is about the question is do you dwell in your life what is to dwell? Dwelling no longer may no longer be killing somebody, like entering a dwell and killing somebody or being killed. But it's about this power struggle that may happen in a family, in a neighborhood, at work, in a community, between nations. We no longer live for that. And when we talk about vengeance, I will read just a phrase or two that were told by the spirit of Jules Olivier in 1862 through the mediums at Kardec's time. And Kardec publishes, vengeance is one of the last remnants arising from barbaric customs that tend to be raised among human beings. Like dwelling, it is one of the last vestiges of those primitive customs under which humankind struggled in the beginning of the Christian era. This is why vengeance is a sure indication of the backwardness of the persons who indulge in it and of the spirits who can still inspire it. Therefore, my friends, this sentiment must never live within the heart anyone who claims to be a spiritist 
But what if it does? Are you going to punish yourself? No. We're going to learn how to work with that emotion. Hmm? When we feel deeply wounded and we take avenge. There is no room for avengers in a regeneration planet. I know we have this movie, Avengers. And if you see many of the superhero movies, we see this bad behavior. People think it's heroic, but they avenge. No, we don't avenge. We don't avenge when we are more elevated. So how do we go from this level to the level of no vengeance? Shall we? This is a short introduction for the lesson, living lesson or life lesson that our dear May May is going to share with us today. Are you ready? So while you're getting ready, I'm going to say hi to the friends who I'm seeing here. Isabella Almeida, big hug to you and the whole family. Valeria Benfica, how have you been? Lisa Telles, how are you? Teresa Castro, how have you been? Marilda Veiga, abraço, Marilda. Nora Brasil, thank you, Nora, for the beautiful translation. It's truly moving to see the quality of this translation. Thank you. Daisy, my friend, thank you so much for being here. Carol Correa, big hug to you, my friend. And John the Rosa, big hug to you and Nina. He, Rihanna, how have you been? Karina Lisi, super hug, Karina. Let us talk about feelings, shall we? I told you, maybe in this book, God awaits. She's talking about, she's helping us to feel the scriptures. This message she's working on, feelings of hatred, indignation. Let's go back. Chapter 12 of the Gospel According to Spiritism. It says here, No to vengeance, no to hatred, and no to dwelling. Many people use social media to dwell. You see, I told you. I'm telling you, blah, 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 blah. Imagine how we vibrate when we do this. Do we want to vibrate like that? If you have color pencil or markers, try to, a good exercise, make a, a portrait of you, how you are vibrating, okay? When you're feeling stuff. Let's say you're feeling good. Draw. Ah, Vanessa, I don't know. But remember, you are a divine being. It's not about the human form. It's about vibrations. We are like a divine spark. How do you think you look like in terms of vibrations when you feel love? Now compare to a drawing when you feel indignated. We're not even talking about hatred. We're not even talking about vengeance or dwelling, but indignation, which is very common for us. How do you think we vibrate? Write it down. Or color, draw it. When we see it, we realize that at the end of the day, we're vibrating. And then we're gonna think twice, oh my gosh, if I keep feeling this, saying this, uh, thinking this, doing this, saying this, how am I vibrating? Nobody's seeing, but I'm feeling, I'm thinking. I may be speaking and doing, but I'm vibrating. Hello, Luciana, Nicoliel, what a joy to have you here too. Okay, so today, May May's lesson. Ready, huh? Chapter 11th, Live Lesson or Living Lesson. She begins by saying, never take revenge on someone. 
Why is she saying this? Because we do. Because if we didn't, she wouldn't be writing this to the general public. She would have given this message specifically to somebody who was in the Spiritist Center where Chico Xavier was psychographing this. But no, the high spirits decide to publish in a book because you and I and others, in some way or form, we may be doing this. Do not ever, never take revenge on someone. Guard your patience and always forgive. Why did Jesus say to Peter, forgive 77 times 7? Because we need it? This is a page found in the book of everyday life. A friend, during a trial, suffered mm. hit after hit. His brother, who was supposed to be devoted to him, instead swept his joy away. His brother inappropriately took over his father's farm, who entrusted it to him as he took his farewell on this existence. His brother separated him from his wife by deceitful behaviors. And at last, this bro his brother took his own son, who was practically still a child, and got him addicted to cocaine and made him a dangerous thief. For this reason, he vowed to finish with him one month after his cunning scheme he learned that his troubled brother would attend a particular festival he got a hold of a weapon and rehearsed his tragic plan one week after this plan however he was invited by a group of devoted brothers and sisters to attend a home service following the gospel of Christ. The lesson was about forgiving our enemies. The unexpected visitor listened to the hour's lecture and was deeply moved to reflect on the teachings of Jesus. Illuminated by a sudden renewal, he decided to forget the offenses received. On the following day, almost unrecognizable. He was in search of his own happiness in the certainty that God would bless him. The hours passed by and when behold, life brings him a strange surprise. In the same place at the scheduled date of the gathering where he would have practiced his intended crime Towards the end of the celebrations, the one who made him a ruthless aggressor fell into the arms of death under a violent cardiac arrest. Lesson learned. Never take revenge. All of us here, there and beyond are under the control of God's law. What is the story again? Two brothers. One is married, the other is not. Their father die. The father gives the farm to the one who is married. The other one takes the wife of the brother and brings the child, the son, with him. Takes the farm for him. So steals the wife, steals the family, steals the farm, everything. First thing the brother thinks, I'm going to kill him. Prepares. Plans. And then, in between planning, rehearsing, and taking action, the good spirits bring him to a meeting, simple, at a house, where people are doing the God at Home meeting, talking about Jesus, the lesson was about forgiveness of offenses. He was so moved about it, he stopped. He changed his heart. 
A week later, he goes to that festivity. His brother is there. He doesn't take revenge. Revenge. At the end of the festivity, that brother dies of a heart attack. Mei Mei concludes the story by saying, lesson learned, never take revenge. God is taking care of everything. She's not saying that God killed the man. No. That's not what she meant. She meant that in the designs of God, there is always the moment in which we're going to be called to our own accounts. We don't need to be the one making justice. But sincerely, let's bring this to our daily lives. How often we may be in some way or another making justice with our own hands. We do. Often. Because it hurts, we go there, make justice. And then we create more animosity. Chico Xavier, I was I learned the other day that Chico Xavier himself once traveling to a city for work, for not spiritist work, professional work, he was arrested. He was arrested because people got him for a man who was a robber. Emmanuel immediately told him, do not struggle, do not worry, just stay calm, we're going to take care of everything. He stayed there, he trusted Emmanuel. The next day, his boss came to the, the city because he was looking for Chico Xavier, couldn't find him, and he knew Chico Xavier was going to be there. Not finding Chico Xavier, he stopped by at the police station. When he got to know, he saw that Chico Xavier was there. Of course, small cities, right? Because if he could easily find Chico Xavier's because it was a tiny jail, of course. But he's there, he found Chico. And everything was clarified. The beauty of it all is that meanwhile, Chico Xavier talked to others who were there, imprisoned, bringing some enlightenment as well. Of course, this only happens with people like Chico Xavier who are so illuminated they can withstand the, the odds of life, right? But not necessarily. Sometimes just a word, a sentence, an image can move us and change our hearts. Who knows if Chico Xavier was not brought there. We don't know the behind the scenes of the story, why the higher spirit needs, needed him there in that prison at that moment. I don't know. We don't know the answer. What we know is this. Any moment we pray together, we read and share these teachings can save a life or many lives. The differential in this beautiful story here is to see the power of one simple God at home meeting in our homes and inviting sometimes people who are in our lives. Some people, I, I agree, Teresa Castro, it's an awesome story, right? Hello, Michi, Claire, big hug to you and Sergio, Patty Soares, how are you? Ro da Silva, Silveira, da Silveira Pinheiro, hello, Raquel Bakeshi. So, think about this. How many people say, ah, right on the day when I have my God at home, I receive, you know, friends call me or people knock at my door or they want to make arrangements well they want to go out on that day why not saying well we're gonna do our god at home meeting if you want you stop by and then we go for dinner oh but that's awkward well but how are we going to share 
the good news. You're going to keep it only for yourself? Hmm? I have spiritist friends today who became spiritist because we stopped by and said, you want to come for a meeting one day? And they said, okay, let's go there. They did, and they became spiritists. Not because we said so, but because they were convinced by the message itself. But if we don't invite, it's never going to go anywhere. You and I are being invited daily by Jesus Christ. Says Emmanuel in the book, Paul and Stephen. Right? It says here, clearly, it says, Who in this world does not have a ministry from God? Hmm? Yes. Um, in reality, all ordinary men and women have been personally called to serve the Christ. All. You and I. We're invited. Why not pass on the invitation? You know, funny enough, when you have a party, you may bring friends with you, right? Or family members. You say, oh, I was invited for this get-together or for this party or for this wedding. You want to come along? We easily pass it on to people and invite them to join us. But why can't we simply do the same about the Spiritist message? Say, you know, you want to come? Would you like to hear it or give them a book? You know, like, for example, giving people a Spiritist book. It's not to proselytize. It's a gift, a true gift. It's a treasure. So when you think, scratch your head, like, oh, what gift am I going to give? I read this book. Oh, but she's going to have a baby. One more reason to give her a spiritist book. Because mothers need a lot of support. Or, oh, he, they got married. Well, a spiritist book to give them support in their new, new school. Because marriage is a school. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of, let's say endurance and resilience to go through the lessons of marriage as the lessons of parenting oh they were just that she was just promoted give her a book a message book a tiny one that she can read every day and say oh i'm not feeling well read a message Oof. wow it's new nourishment it's re-energizing it's relief so Again, Mimi is opening our hearts to feel, do you believe in God? Do you believe that God is taking care of everything? Leave justice for God, for God's sakes. God is taking care of everything. Look at our guide and model. He knew Judas was going to mess up he announced he warned saying someone here and yet he didn't prohibit he didn't refrain from doing he just let god take care of everything god is taking care of you and i so let us wrap up today with this exercise. Put your hand in your heart and let us repeat ourselves. I know that God is taking care of my life. I know. I feel God is taking care of my life. Let us repeat. I feel that God is taking care of my life. I feel that God is taking care of my life. I feel that God is taking care of my life. I feel and I know that God is taking care of my life. Three more times. I feel and I know that God is taking care of my life. I feel and I know that God is taking care of my life. I feel and I know that God is taking care of my life. Breathing deeply, feel it. Let us practice this exercise and let God do 
is justice. For Nas, for us, we just need to trust. As she says, never take revenge. Tiny or big. Never. Ever. Sometimes people take revenge like this. You say something they didn't like, they go and boom, snap. That's a form of revenge, of dwelling. Not good. Let them be. Right? Thank you, Carol. I feel and I know that God is taking care of my life. Shall we, friends? Oh, sweet May May, wise teacher of our hearts, thank you for this message. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And may we renew ourselves and learn how to trust in God. Tomorrow when we come back, May May is going to teach us about Hope. What is it? Hmm? Hope. The hope of others. Tomorrow is all about hope. Come back tomorrow. 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 Okay? A big hug to you, friend. And don't forget, I feel and I know that God is taking care of my life, in your life, in all of our lives. And so be it. Thank you, friends. Until tomorrow.